Welcome to Not Exactly Music, the podcast where I, Kent S. Godfrey, explore multi-sensory tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony. This is episode three. Episodes one and two went really well. I got some great feedback and I'm enjoying creating these. I've been listening to the first couple of episodes and I've been seeing how I can make some improvements. And the big thing is that I'm going to stop saying you know so much. I'm trying not to use a script, so this causes me to have to search for words sometimes, but I think in the long run it's best because it's more natural. Anyway, remember the Not Exactly Music podcast is all about tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony, regardless of the senses through which they are perceived. Consequently, In this month's episode, I'm going to define tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony. This is essential because the potential to experience these things through multiple senses is contingent upon exactly what we're talking about, exactly what tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony are at their core. The definitions give us something to build off of and refer back to. The second thing I'm going to do in this month's episode is discuss some definitions of the concept music. I've gotten these definitions from various dictionaries and resources, and I've chosen to emphasize the aspects of the definitions that benefit the Not Exactly Music podcast. In other words, the aspects that don't mention sound. But a lot of the definitions really don't focus on sound or even have sound in them, so it's pretty easy. And perhaps I'll get some input from other people who will give me their definitions and some other resources for definitions. I need to tell you a little bit about the difference between the senses and a term called modalities. Senses are more general and modalities are more specific within a sense. I'm going to go into these in much more detail in future episodes, but for now, and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to define the senses as taste, smell, touch, vision, sound, and kinesthesis. But I mention modalities a lot. Within the senses, there are more specific categories, which are called modalities. For example, within vision, there's colors, written text, sign language, music notation, abstract patterns. They're all different modalities, but they're all within vision. Each sense has many modalities within it. So here are some definitions. Tone, the quality or character of something. It often refers to sound or color, but not exclusively. Within physiology, there's muscle tone, which refers to the responsiveness of the organs. We've all heard of this. Within art, tone means the prevailing effect, like in visual art. This reminds me of how, within music, another term for tone is musical color. Tone even refers to someone's mental condition. Tone can refer to the particular style or manner of writing. I believe that, regardless of the sense, realm, or subject area, Tone is the quality or character of something, and the same tone can be experienced through any modality. I believe that tone is the same thing regardless of which sense it is experienced through. Rhythm. The definition that I really like is any pattern that repeats. It's simple. It's easy to understand. This really keeps open the possibility that rhythm can be experienced through any modality. Within physiology, Rhythm often relates to the muscles. There's the rhythm of the seasons. Within art and literature, there's rhythm. It refers to the pattern repetition of a motif or formal element. The thing that all of these have in common is that there is an element that repeats. Keep in mind that rhythm is what works. In physiology, in the body, in architecture. Within architecture, something doesn't work or stand up if thing, if the different parts are different lengths or uh, different distances from each other. It's the same thing in furniture. You have to have a rhythm. You know, the legs have to be the same length. They have to be spaced evenly on a chair or a table. It's all about uh, consistent rhythms. 
within physiology. There's bodily processes that are working when they are in rhythm, but we have terms like arrhythmia when the heart is not in rhythm. So not being in rhythm physiologically is a problem. There's other bodily functions that are all about rhythm as well. You notice when you're walking, being in rhythm, but if you have a hitch in your step or something, um, you notice it because it, you've been walking your whole life and you've had this rhythm over and over and over again. So you notice when the rhythms aren't working in your body. Rhythm is really cool because it's the component of music most easily recognized as existing in senses other than sounds. So it's a jumping off point. People readily accept that rhythm exists kinesthetically, such as in dance. Experiencing it tactily or through pressure with another person tapping out a rhythm on your back makes sense to most people. And people frequently can imagine that rhythm is experienced visually. Like in a painting, particularly Jackson Pollock, they can see the rhythm in that. But then once you tell people about they, about rhythm in various senses, they, it really makes sense to them. People are certainly aware of rhythm being applied metaphorically. Since people can see that rhythm is experienced across the various modalities, they are open to the idea that perhaps tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony might be experienced in various modalities as well. Melody. Melody is the combination of tones and rhythms producing a distinct phrase or idea. We know what tones and rhythms are. Well, we put them together and we've got melody. Melody is also the distinct driving force. The fact that many definitions don't include sound for melody, it really opens up the possibility of melody being experienced through senses in addition to sound. Harmony. The combination of simultaneous tones, multiple tones, all at once. It is a consistent, orderly, or pleasing arrangement of parts. Congruity. When everything is in harmony, everything is good. Harmony is the other notes that go along with the melody, but they're not the main part. Here are some music definitions. Music is often defined as humanly organized tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony expressed through sound that the listener has an emotional response to. So all of these parts are important. By organized, we don't really mean organized ahead of time or that you know we're putting a band together and we're creating a, an album or we plan out you know who's doing the rhythm, the melody, the tone, and the harmony. It's more conceptually. It's more that uh, the listener groups things together in his consciousness or conceptually. He might come across auditory tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony and then put them together to conclude that they result in the concept music. The emotional response is an important aspect of the definition of music. Because tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony is everywhere, well then, simply having tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony can't make something music because everything has these parts. Something doesn't give us an emotional response because it's music. It's music because it gives us an emotional response. This emotional response is the result of cultural values and worldview. A really interesting thing is the fact that the emotional response is partially due to the fact that the way that a culture combines tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony in sound is similar to how that culture constructs other things in its culture, including dance, cuisine, relationships, mythology, religion, architecture, etc. So people have an emotional response to music because the ways that the tone and rhythm, melody, and harmony are combined in sound are familiar. The other realms of a specific culture are validating that culture's way of organizing auditory tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony. So when someone is experiencing the way that their culture organizes sound with tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony, it's reinforcing all that they have experienced in their culture in all the different ways. 
Once again, sound is not the content of music. Rather, sound is merely one medium that carries tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony to the brain. It is the vehicle that tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony can ride upon to get to the brain. Another way of looking at this is that when sound is the sense that someone experiences tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony through, we call it music. For something to be music, it must contain sound. One of the defining characteristics of music is that it contains sound. When tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony reach the brain via vision, we call it visual art. Sound, we call it music. Kinesthesis, dance, and taste, cuisine. In fact, I hypothesize that the same exact tones, rhythms, melodies, and harmonies can be experienced visually in visual art, kinesthetically in dance, auditorily in music, gustatorily in cuisine, and literally in literature. My belief is that the benefits associated with the concept music arise from experiencing the content, tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony. Tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony are the important things. They have their impacts regardless of which senses they are experienced through, and they need to have an emotional impact on the individual. So it's that marriage, that combination of sound, tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony, and an emotional response. In very few instances are the benefits associated with music related to sound. It's not sound that causes the benefits. It's the content, the tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony. An interesting question is, how much personal meaning does the tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony have to have for someone to reap those benefits associated with music? Tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony alone are not enough. There's tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony in shoes going through a clothes dryer. Ba-doom, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. But without an emotional impact, it isn't going to impart the benefits associated with music. We all have internal models of things without those models necessarily being formally stated and without being cognizant of those models. We all carry models around with us. So what we do is we compare what we come across to those models to, to decide if it is that thing or if it's something else. Something has to have enough of the elements that we recognize as being part of that particular thing for us to identify it as that thing. Music is like this. Different people construct different understandings of music. And like I mentioned, you know, culture is a big part of what causes someone to construct a certain understanding of music. Imagine a bullseye. For each individual, their model or understanding of music is exactly at the center of that bullseye. But other people's definitions or understandings of music are a little further out. And as something has less and less of the things you associate with music, then it's further and further out of the center of the bullseye until eventually things are so different than your understanding and have so many different characteristics that it is practically something different and then it is actually a different concept other than music when it is, once it is so far away from your understanding of music. Music is a cultural construct that was codified in Western Europe in the 17th century. In other words, the way that Europeans organized tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony at that time stuck. Most Western definitions of music stress things like combinations of tones, beauty, intelligibility, and expressiveness. The Western European concept of music has spread throughout the world and has become the standard by which similar concepts are judged and measured. Ethnomusicologists recognize that these things around the world are very much like music, but are in fact not music. But for convenience sake, we simply call them all music, which I think is a big problem. It leads to a lot of confusion. The music-like concepts around the world are often more participatory and communicative 
and entail active contributions from all members of the society, but Western European-based music doesn't really do do this so much. Non-Western music-like concepts often not only involve sound, but also movement. Picture how Western European-based music concerts have clear delineations between the audience members and the performers. They are very linear, with the audience all in rows facing in one direction toward the performers. But a lot of concepts around the world are not like this. Non-Western music-like concepts from around the world that are comparable to music need to be recognized as their own things, on their own terms, not forced to fit into the Western concept of music or to have aspects of them ignored. One of the big, big things about uh, the concepts around the world that are kind of confused with music or forced into the Western model is that they really incorporate multiple senses a lot. So that's really something I'm interested in and something we can look at a lot and really learn from. My contention is that definitions of tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony are not sense-specific. They're the same concept, and they mean the same thing regardless of what sense they're experienced through. At the core of these definitions is a meaning that transcends senses. The point is that tone, rhythm, melody, and harmony, experienced through senses in addition to sound, can feasibly convey the many benefits associated with music. Here's a little housekeeping about the podcast. The frequency of the podcast is meant to be about once a month on the first Monday of the month, but it might be hard for me to get out episodes that often because I work in a completely unrelated field. There's a lot of research involved in each episode, and it's a work in progress. I'm learning how to put together things like a website, social media, putting this on YouTube. What I do for each episode is I put a video that's not really a video on YouTube. It's a static image, but what I have is I have the closed captioning for deaf audiences because this work is so relevant to deaf people that I would hate for it to not be accessible. So right now, my best approach is to have the closed captioning on YouTube. Uh, If you have any other suggestions for making this accessible, please let me know. Let me know how my efforts are going in that respect. Please share this podcast and the related social media in places that you think deaf people might come across it. And hopefully um, I can get it out there to the audience that I really intend it for. Please be in touch with me with any questions or suggestions of topics. My name is Kent S. Godfrey, K-E-N-T-S-G-O-D-F-R-E-Y. You can email me at Kent S. Godfrey at notexactlymusic.com. Message me on the website at www.kentsgodfrey.com forward slash connect. You can find me on Facebook at Kent S. Godfrey and on Twitter at Kent S. Godfrey. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to going on this journey with you. Thanks for listening. Bye now.